again. I'm gonna have to do this vlog in the car. So you haven't seen me for a while because um, I have been extremely blessed to be busy, but in the last week I have been, I've driven a couple thousand miles. I had a job in Alabama um, before Halloween. Then the next day I came home, I had a commercial job that night. And then the next day I had a wedding. And then the following day we drove to Natchitoches to uh, see my daughter's theater performance. She was on the main stage. Um, but then the following day we drove home and we stopped in Baton Rouge to do a newborn session and got home with a couple hours to spare. And then Jack had something in Chalmette, which is a good like hour drive from where we are. I, I have a little bit to unpack for you today. Man, this bridge is very like bumpy. You're like, doom, da -doom, da -doom. So um, I've been working with both cameras. My uh, new XHS2 and the XT4, which I love. So what I don't like about the new camera, first and foremost, is where the little joystick is for your thumb. The XT4, I swear to you, it is like the most perfectly designed, made camera grip for you. I can hold the X-T4 in my hand and keep keep it held and do all the things I have to do. Take pictures, change the focus, where the, um, the box is on the screen, all with an ease. The X-H2S, they put the darn joystick like a little higher and to the left. So basically with the grip, because it's a bigger grip, you know, there's more girth to this, to this body. Um, you have to always hunt for the damn joystick. And it ticks me off, man. I work fast on events. And I work in completely manual mode. I never, I never work in program mode. Um, so for me to, you know, still do my f-stop, shutters on the front, that's fine. But that joystick on the back is a pain. It's a big time pain. So if by chance Fuji could make, could take all of the guts of the X-H2S, okay? Put that, that double sensor for better focusing, which by the way, it, it does do. Um, it's, a, it's a great camera. I love the camera. It is a, a little bit different from my X-T4. Look, y'all, for the sake of me not stuttering these darn numbers, when I say old camera, I mean X-T4, okay? When I say new camera, that's my X-H2S. I'm not saying those letters anymore. So, on the old camera, I'll have my 75mm Viltrox 1.2 on there, and I'm working with a strap now, so both cameras are on me. That alone has been life-changing for me. Wow. It's 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 awesome having both on me. So my my new camera has the uh, you know 24 to 70 type lens, which is my workhorse, and then my older camera has the zoom on there, and that makes it so awesome for me to work um, and not have to worry about changing lenses on on the spot. So that part's really cool. The um, what I do like about the new camera is that faster. Um, CF Express card. Well, you know, you also get this CF Express card reader. All right, that is life changing. It, that is absolutely freaking life changing. It is way fast to import whatever you have on the card. I have a 128 gig card, and I do video and stills. And it all writes on there, and I am just super impressed. So, new camera's profile, I swear they go in the Capture One, and they look rich. Okay, so, let me show you these images that I've been banging out, dude. So, first night over in Alabama. Um, this was all low-lit kind of things. The focusing on the new camera is, is great. It works really, really good. Um, the amount of times that you miss a shot, it's it's small so small and a lot of times when, when I missed the focus 
I missed the focus. I was moving too quick. I was, you know, whipping around to get a shot, whatever it is. So, so this was a daytime wedding at a little, this big oak tree, it's called the Tree of Life. And, uh, you know, the sun was a little higher than I would have liked to have been outside, but it all worked out with um, the tree providing some shade, some angles that I can find. But again, both cameras, I love both my cameras. That darn focusing deal is the only thing that I wish mimicked the older camera. I'm serious. I'm having to like get the camera away from my face and then look for where the darn button is because my thumb just doesn't go to it. I'm just so used to that X-T4. It's like your thumb just scooches to the left and there it is. Um, it's, it's, not, it's not there. So anyway, that's something I'll just be getting used to. And it also doesn't help that I'm working with two different models. <laughs> so my older camera, I'm used to it, so that's not really a big deal. But the new camera, your brain, it's amazing how your brain works. And uh, you know, you grab, you grab your X-T4, you take some pictures, you grab the other camera, and it's like your brain has to be told, remember, the joystick is up and left a little bit, it's a pain. Uh, besides that, it's awesome. The 4K60 video that comes off of this camera, the new camera, unbelievable. Like legit unbelievable. I throw this thing in um, Final Cut Pro, and I'm not really doing anything to the images. I'm not color grading. They look fantastic out of the camera. Um, I love how you can custom program your video settings of when you hit the video button, what is the default. And the default, I have it set to, I believe, auto ISO. So it's always, no matter what the lighting scenario is, it's ready to go um, at 4K60. So anyway, after the wedding, uh, the next day, we went up to visit Julia, but I didn't take any pictures of that. Um, but I did come back to Baton Rouge and do a newborn session. And a lot of these are natural light, and some are with fill flash to some degree, whether I was bouncing off the walls in the house. God, these bumps are ridiculous. Um, but I, I love natural light as much as I can. You know, doing a newborn session at somebody's house is so difficult. It's so difficult. And we bring our own props, you know, to a degree. We, we bring the wraps, you know. But we, when we have it in the studio, you know, everything is right there. We can work. The lighting is consistent. But I love challenges, and I like new, and I love how things look in somebody's home. It's just more work. It's a lot more work. And today, to uh, get us all caught up, I had a family session across the lake at sunset, which I love working outside in the lowest light possible for the best colors, the softer light on the people, nobody's squinty, and uh, just learn to uh, find the light see where you can shoot in the shade where the sunlight is your highlights and uh, go you know and then you, there's kids involved so run around chase them shoot sports action shots with the kids <laughs> that's all you can really do man so now I'm driving home let me show you how much longer I got I'm getting there getting there so I'm gonna get some sushi on the way home dump these cards Ugh. so that was part one <laughs> that was part one part two is all of these weddings I had um, so from September 30th through my wedding this weekend coming I think there's like six or seven weddings it's been a long time since I've had that many weddings in one month October just blew up but the hardest part of having weddings and all these corporate events during the week um, is keeping up with the processing. You know, it was like, oh my gosh, 2,000 plus images on a wedding. It takes time to develop a wedding. You know, get through your raws and cull them down. Big, big, big shout out to Aftershoot. I have been using Aftershoot solely for my culling 
and I have trained my AI profile with thousands and thousands of my own images. I've been doing that like since the summer. So it takes a while, y'all. But when I tell you yesterday and today, I developed three weddings. Three weddings in two days. After shoot culls down so well, you can trust it. It'll separate the blurry shots to its own folder. It'll put the closed eyes in its old in its own folder. It'll even uh, make the selects folder, which those are the ones I usually go through, and it just makes my life a lot easier. And it's gonna, there's very very few there's very few images that you know as you're going through your selects and you're like, why did it pick this? You know, why did it pick this? you get a small handful of those kind of you know selections where it's like well it's not perfect it's not perfect but when i tell you it is probably as close to perfect as um i need it right now as far as culling goes it's wonderful i can tell it to color a job and then while it's working in the background go work on something else legit either take a break or work on something else and that's what i did um so I have developed three weddings in the past two days, um, two commercial gigs I was behind on. I have another two or three weddings still I need to go home and do um, sometime this weekend. I don't know, this week, next week. And it also does uh, the processing. And b between you and me, I'm just gonna be honest here. I like how Capture One works with my Fuji files better than Lightroom does. Y'all, I apologize for the bounciness of this thing. Good Lord. Apparently my left hand can't hold it as steady as my right hand because I'm right-handed. Um, so the only thing I have to do is import a project in Lightroom for that job, say it's Jane Smith. Open Lightroom, start a new project, call it Jane Smith and you import the job and then in after shoot i need to import that lightroom catalog to do the editing not the culling okay so what i normally do is with after shoot i will do the culling first i'll export it to a folder called selected that selected folder i then import into lightroom i'm sure they're going to change this step soon it's annoying as all hell all right, I'm at a red light. I want to finish this vlog in my truck tonight. Um, yeah, so how amazing is that to develop, fully deliver three weddings in two days? Thank you, thank you, thank you, Aftershoot. Um, so I have a link below where you can support my channel, use my link. Um, they know it came from me, and uh, that'd be fantastic. Just do the trial, dude. You, you got to see what this thing can do. Unbelievable.